Intermediate Algebra, Section 9.5, Graphs of Exponential Functions and Logarithmic Functions. In this first example, they're asking us to graph the function equal to e to the x. This is an exponential function with the base e, which has an approximate value of 2.7. And we'll use a calculator with an e to the x key to find approximate values of this function. So the first one, I have a table set up here with an x value of 0 that will plug in the function, which e to the x is the function that's given, and function notation can be replaced with y, so we're setting up ordered pairs that will graph then to get a sense of what this looks like. Anything to the 0 power is equal to 1, e to the first power is going to equal e, and as I said, has an approximate value of 2.7. e to the second power would be 2.7 squared, but let's use the calculator and get an exact value. We have an e key, which is the exponential inverse of a natural log, which has base e. And to activate that, I need to tap the shift and the natural log key, followed by the power. So in this problem, I want to know what e to the second power is. I tap equals, and I get a 7 point, we'll call it 4 for graphing purposes. e to the negative 1 is putting that value in the denominator, so we actually have 1 over 2.7. And when you calculate that, you end up with a 0.4 e to the negative 2, when we let x equal a negative 2, results in a value of 0.1. As our values increase positively, our x is going to increase as well. And as our x values decrease towards negative infinity, they're going to get smaller and smaller and approach zero as we've seen in previous graphing of exponential functions. So let's plot these points. We have the first one is at zero, one. It's our y-intercept. We had the ordered pair one, 2.7. We had two, 7.4, a little bit off the graph. Another ordered pair is negative 1.4 negative 2.1. And if we connect these with a smooth curve then, we have the classic shape of an exponential function where it's approaching the x-axis. As an asymptote, it'll never cross that line. We have our y-intercept at 0, 1. It increases without bound. As far as the domain, there would be no restriction on the domain. All real numbers can be used. If we put that in interval notation, it would run the gamut from negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range or the y values that are being used, it's all values that are positive, in other words, greater than zero, so our y would be greater than zero. If we use interval notation, we want them greater than zero but not equal to, so we'd use a parenthesis with our zero and ever increase towards positive infinity. Looking at a variation of that exponential function, in this example they're asking us to graph the function where e is raised to the x plus one. And let's see what happens. Again, this second column is generating our y values. So we'll have a 0 in place of x, which leaves us with e to the 0 plus 1 or e to the first power. And that would be approximately 2.7. If, e, if x is 1, we would have e to the 1 plus 1 or e to the second power. And we had that in the previous graph that results in a 7.4, we would end up with an x of 2 having e to the 2 plus 1 or third power. It's going to be off our graph. It's getting ever larger. 
what happens with negative values. When x is a negative 1 plus the 1 that's already there gives us e to the 0, anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. With a negative 2 in place of x plus the 1, we end up with e to the negative 1. This would be 1 over 2.7, which has an approximate value of 0.4. These values from the x with the y are very similar to what we had with just the function e to the x. What does the plus 1 do to the graph? Well, let's graph these points and see. The first point we have is 0, 2.7. We found a 1, 7.4, so we're off our graph. 3, as I said, would be definitely increasing further. We have a negative 1, 1, and we have a negative 2, 0.4. If we'd plugged in negative 3, we would have had a 0.1. So connecting these points that we found with a smooth curve, we have the classic exponential function increasing as our values go from left to right. It's approaching the smaller our x values are. It's getting ever closer to the horizontal asymptote of the x-axis or the line y equals zero. The domain will be all real numbers. The range will be positive values. It's the same that we found for e to the x but the difference is, if we look at this point, negative 1, 1 was at 0, 1. It was just in this second graph, it is just shifted 1 to the left. And every one of the points we had in our original graph, we had 1 at 2.7, we had 2 at 7.4, and we have 1 every one of these has been shifted to the left one. So adding one to our exponent shifts or translates our graph to the left. Let's take a look at what a logarithmic function looks like. Since they're reciprocals of the exponential function, we should see, and let me bring this back up, when we have an inverse function, we should see a reflection of that function about the y equals x line. So I've put in a dashed line for y equals x, and here we have the point 0, 1. The inverse would be 1, 0. This point was 1, 2.7, so at 2.7, 1, we should find a point with these points being reflected. Here we have this point, we would reflect at that same distance. Likewise, these points, I believe we will find the inverse of our function, f of x equal to e to the x, to look something like this, and that inverse function is this function that's given here. The natural log ln of x is shorthand for log base e of x is the inverse and we'll see if we do get that graph that I just drew in as the reflection of e to the x. So a couple test values here. We'll find some solutions using a calculator. The first one is the ln of letting x equal 1. So if we take the ln of 1 using our calculators, you may know this value from previous experience with logarithms, but to show using the calculator, I'll tap the natural log key, put the 1 in, and the result is 0 anything our base e to what power gives us one would be zero. If we put four in there, what's the natural log of four? When we hit a equals, we end up with ln of four has a value of 1.4 if we round it to the nearest tenth. The ln of seven natural log of 7 ends up with a value of 1.9.
what about putting in values between 1 and 0? We can't take logs of negative numbers, but we can take values that are ever closer to 0. So what happens when we take the natural log, base e of 0.5, so tapping the natural log, putting in 0.5, we end up with a negative 0.7 rounding to the nearest tenth. Then, drawing the graph with these points, we have 1, 0 for our first ordered pair. We have 4, 1.9, so I'm over here at 4. I said 1.9, but it should be 1.4, so 1.4. Then we have 7 at 1.9, and our x value of 0.5 halfway here has a negative 0.7. So we're starting to make that dive down towards y values getting ever closer to negative infinity. And our graph getting ever closer to intersecting but not the y-axis, which is acting as the asymptote of this function. So here we have the graph of the natural log, and as I drew the reflection of e to the x, its inverse is the natural log of x. As we can see, the graph here that we plotted by points is exactly the graph that is the inverse of e to the x.